Hi folks, Rich here from Garrick's Camera House Maroochydore, and I'm with Richard Bassett. How are you, Rich? Good, thanks. Yourself? I'm really well, mate. Yeah, I'm really great, good. Great day. Good to be here. Great. Mate, I've, I've invited Rich to come in just so we could have a chat. Rich is actually a photographic judge, and uh, I'm just wanting to get some clarification about how we prepare images for uh, photographic competitions and things of that nature. Yep. But first of all, Rich, like, what's your history, mate? How did you get involved in this photography world? Uh, well, years ago, my father was an avid photographer. Um, took a lot of photos during the war, Second World War, and then a lot of slides and things, you know, as, a, as, a, as a sort of those things come on board. I used to follow Dad around a lot when I was younger yeah. and just, you know, sort of picked up on the what's and what's he does. Yeah. Um, and it was some years later when I actually sort of got involved in camera clubs. Right. And was it the was it your dad's original images, like those yeah. early World War? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think they're fascinating, some of those. That, I, yeah. I've seen some of these, an English fellow who does a, uh, a film rescue project where he yeah. basically asks from people in his local community to bring in undeveloped, like the old 120 or 127 yes. roll film. Yeah. And what he gets off there is unbelievable. Yeah. And, and when you look at it, it's very emotional to think that uh, at some point in time that that moment was so important for a photographer mm -hmm. to capture it. Yeah, yeah. yeah quite to, amazing. To lock in that history and that, yeah. that time, yeah. So then when your father gets back and, you, and you've taken on that, um, inspired by your dad and his capturing yeah. of images, yeah. so did you, where did you take it? Um, well, just through them, my own family, and then as you're taking shots of your children and the things you're doing in life, you sort of think, oh, I'd like to learn a bit more about this. So um, you read books and, and look at examples of work, um, you know, collections of art. And then that led me to sort of camera clubs. Yeah. So I actually started at the Harvey Bay Camera Club way back then. Right. And then was in there for about some five years and then decided to become, get a bit more involved and learn a bit more. Yeah. Um, because it's like anything, you think you know something and as you start, you dig in, you think, oh, there's so much It goes to deeper learn. and deeper. Mm. So um, as a consequence of that, joined the club and was really motivated by the people around me and, and what we were learning. And then there was people that sort of tapped me on the shoulder and said, you know, would you like to become a PSQ judge for a photographic mm. society? Uh, and I guess to then the reason that people will then ask if you wanted to become a judge, well, you must have a, an, an aptitude or a temperament that is yeah. suitable for yeah. that sort of thing too, right? Yeah, you've got to be, um, because I suppose you're trying to, uh, explain to people about a craft if you like and you want them to develop and evolve so sometimes an example was you, you get people just to we're trying to get you to get your head around composition not so much how to drive a camera yes. so let's just put it on automatic and let's just get a feel for composition and lighting and what's going on yeah. Got, understand that good then we sort of take it to the next level where we can start to use aperture priorities and things like that got it and then to manual yeah so you don't want to crush people and overload them or overwhelm them initially. And, and I definitely have been a party to that. I've been mm. to camera clubs and I've seen where a, uh, you know, a photographer is just new to the craft and really just honing his skills um, and he's got such a harsh critique that it kind of just kills it for yeah, him, doesn't can, it? It's, just, it's a roadblock. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so, um, and everybody comes in at their own level. We all learn in different ways. Mm. But I've found that... that Photographers are very visual learners, so often just by using examples of photographs like we have here today, you can explain things and people can see, oh, I understand, I get it, you know, and that's, yeah. that's the sort of thing we're looking for. Yeah. So, Matt, can you speak to me of, of how this image, um, how, how do you look at that from a uh, photographic judge's perspective? Okay. So the first thing we see there is... Um, there's a, a, a person, so the human element comes straight through. We've all related to either father or grandfather or a, an mm. elderly friend. So he's a man that's uh, experienced life and put a lot of time in. So I'm getting all that information without, you know, it's just there on the face. And then you can see he's got a connection to his past or maybe his father's past. Mm -hmm. we, we've got to make some assumptions, but he's connecting back to the army days of World War One or two, and how that's affected or... or, or and him into his person that he turned out to be and how he's like, yeah. yeah. So you can see a little bit of his environment, so he's in his own home, you would think. Uh, he's got some war memorabilia on the, th on the wall. So it was a very important part of his life and he's just reflecting on that. Yeah. And, uh, and he does, uh, uh, you're right, I, I look at that image and I do, I feel a, a connection to my father. Yes, yes. Um, to, 
uh, to the people who went to war for us That's and, right, yeah. and uh, the product of what we get to enjoy today yeah. is because of brave yeah. men like, like him. So, so having spoken about the story of the message, and there's a lot of interesting lines. They've got the reflection, so that tells you the part that the man's reflecting on life. So yes. there's a bit of an added I, element I there. I do like that. So yeah. that's that's a clever uh, use of, of materials. Clever. It probably um, mutes out what otherwise would have been a wall, or maybe that photo might have even been a bit distracting and taken us from the subject. From the subject. The background's fairly muted. You know, there's a, we can see it's environmental, but there's no. They've closed the curtain to stop terrible backlight, so mm -hmm. they've thought about the picture. Yeah. Yeah, but and then the lines of the of the frames all kind of lead you back to the man too, so kind of definitely it, it rolls together. Yeah. Mm, I quite enjoy that image mm. too. All right, let's have a look at another couple, mates. So this is obviously one of the competition photos, yep. and like we've said, folks, Richard's not judging the competition. No. So we're, we are <coughs> simply having a general chat about some of the images. Trying that, to give it the yeah, uh, just trying to give some it a tools little, little bit of, yeah, yeah. For, for sure. Yeah. But when I first saw that, I thought, gosh, now well, does that fit the theme? And then I kind of went, hang on a minute, the, the drum kit in the background. Yep. What what better um, what better than music to give us? a place and a time. Exactly, you know? yeah, it does yeah. that, yeah. It yeah. does, so it, it, it's a time stamp almost. Um, so I thought, oh, okay, uh, we, we were talking about the past, the present, the yeah. future, yeah. Uh, and here's a young lady, and this is obviously very much um, speaking <clears throat> of a time. Now, I'm, I'm not sure if that's a, a recent image or an older image, but to that particular person, it designates almost a day, a month, and a year, exactly, yeah. right back to yeah. the day yeah. of how popular that perhaps and, that is. And as you read that, I'm not as young as I used to be, but we can all reflect back as the gentleman was in the previous photo. Mm. So you can think back, so we all relate to being young, out dancing, partying, you know, lots yeah, of music. That's right. yeah. And I think that image to that young lady, if it is even um, off, you know, if that's the, the lady that actually owns that image, because yeah. that, that could be a complete random to a photographer. That's that, right. To us photographers, yeah, yeah. we often grab moments out of yeah. people's lives. But imagine that young lady looking back in time. Um, gosh, I think that's going to stir some emotions for her. Yeah. And I think that's what I love about photography too. It's not what you and I as photographers produce today. It's when people look back at it yes. in 10 years or 20 yeah. years or yeah. 30 years it's a, time. It's a snapshot of time that of you're time. harvesting or collecting. Yeah. And I love that about yeah, photography. That's, that's I think good. it's great. All right. Um, what else did I find interesting? Okay. What about that? Uh, that's very much a modern scene now. We see graffiti on all sorts of walls, all mm -hmm. sorts of railway carriages, signs, and, mm. and, and society and councils have thought, hang on, there's a lot of potential talent there. Mm. Let's try and make some designated areas where they can actually do their artwork. Right? Mm. Yeah. So then you can see in this image, then looking at it, it's telling a story about the modern day, the, the young man there with his hoodie on, whether he's having a bad day or a good day, we don't know whether it just might be cold and he's covered up. That's right. But that's interesting. They've put him into the frame. Then we've got all this interesting texture on the shed or the metal work that it's been painted on. And then that contrasts with the horizontal lines of the bricks at the base. Mm. And, and the slow shutter speed, obviously, there's been a bus a traffic, or, or a yeah, vehicle some, some or something's gone through. past. Yeah, and, and I guess like when I look at that, um, you're right, I don't know the young man or his no, position, no. but I seem to think maybe he feels a little bit down, a little yeah, bit, you know, be, he, yeah, he definitely, yeah. you know, that, that posture of looking down. Yeah, he's a bit flat. I, I know I've felt like that before, yeah. I see myself when I look at that. Yeah. But I also see this movement in, the, right. in the traffic going yeah. past, and, and that, to me, I'm, I'm almost reading into this image that this too shall pass. Yeah, that's whatever, right. you, whatever it is that's yeah. plaguing me today, yes. just like the traffic and the movement yep. of time, yep. this too shall pass. Life, life throws its challenges, you have to just work through them quietly. And you always get, you know, there's yeah. always a positive note at the end, I feel, yeah. Mm. It's and isn't it great you can, you can look at an image like that? Yes. Now that we have a theme to interpret such yes. an image. it's a transitional kind of image. But without the theme or without the, the titles or anything like that, you can look at an image like that and you go, oh, well, I don't really understand what I'm looking at. But yeah. that's the beauty yeah. of getting into yeah. when, when you join a photographic club, folks, or you uh, put yourself into well, being exposed to ridicule, when, yes. uh, we're, we're all a yeah. little bit afraid of that. 
But your photography does take a huge leap forward because yes. now you're creating something or finding something in your own work um, that has a meaning. I suppose camera clubs are the ones that we've been involved with personally here at the store level, which is the Caloundra Camera Group, yep. the Noosa Camera Club, the InFocus yep. Group. They're getting really good numbers. Yes, yeah, people yeah. Are, are keen to learn more. Definitely. Because there's that, you see a lot of um, run of the mill photography, if you want to call it that, then you start to see people that have a bit of, a, a well, bit of an understanding. Cr cream of it. starts to float yeah, to the top, and right? Yeah, you start to discriminate that people can see, oh, that's good, oh, that's even better. Oh, yeah, why is that yeah, really yeah. fantastic? Why is that, why is that one yeah. touching me mm. uh, in a way that the other images haven't that's yet right, grabbed me? Yeah. I find it fascinating when I go to, um, to the club nights and they have a, a judge and I watch them and you'll see that they'll be, they'll be going along, going along, going along, and then they'll stop yeah. And you think, why? Something, what is this? Yeah. Something. Something in that image has caused him to stop. And, I, and I, you know, uh, you can't go and tap him on the shoulder there and then, but I make a note of that. And then I walk past it mm -hmm. as well and to see if I get that same feeling. Mm -hmm. And quite often I don't, which, which uh, speaks of just how personal, you know, the, yeah. being a judge has to yeah. be. Because yeah. uh, what you see, I don't see. And of course, what the author of that yeah, image has put in perhaps, yeah. you know, has been lost completely. Yeah. And I guess the other thing too, folks, when we talk about judging or, or critiquing images, you've got to remember that that's just one other person's opinion. And I suppose you're fairly thick-skinned like that too, aren't you, Richard? Yeah, you, yeah, know? you have to be, yeah. And I think to learn, you have to take everything on board. Yeah. And say, so, well, that's fair comment, I agree, or I can use that, or no, it's not really where I'm at, mm. thanks very much, and all, you know, but don't take offence and don't kind of be ruffled by it, just be, you know, you learn from all of those things, good, bad, you know, we try to keep things positive rather than negative, yeah. but, but at the end of the day, I can't keep telling you something's terrific if it's not, you need, no. to, you need to come up the stages and that's the steps, right. yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. great. Mm. All right, mate, so tell me, like, as far as being a photographic judge, and this is for the folks yep. at home, yep. when they submit an image for a competition, yes. and obviously there's always a, a theme, which, uh, is, which is a part of the criteria, That's right, yep. and then you must look at other aspects of the image, such as the creativity, etc. Yeah. Can you give me a rough breakdown, and I know this is not for all judges, and it certainly wouldn't be for all competitions, but in what order of importance do you put those criteria? Usually... Um You'll have some criteria, so that puts you in a, an area, if you like. Then with that in mind, we read the photo. So when you read a photo, it's a bit like reading an article in a paper. You'd like to get something, you've read it, and think, oh, I learned something here. Or you I'd see an image and you get a mood or a feel or it tells you a story about, you know, social documentary or, you know, just grandchildren and, and older people, you know hands and things like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the story and the message is important because that gives a person something, but then how we emulate that is through composition, through colour, or through the lack of colour with, with black and white, so that the lines and the textures come through. All colour can be uh, used, you know, and then you've got your background, which is always very important, what's going on behind, mm -hmm. not just the actual scene. Mm -hmm. Um, and the use of colour, then you've got all your rules of composition with leading lines and the rules of thirds. But you need to understand those, but you don't need to sort of be bogged down with them. It's like anything. If you, if you understand what's going on, then you can kind of, oh, I know where that... And you can push the limits a little bit. It's yeah, a bit yeah. like once you know the rules, yeah. you can start to break the rules. Yeah, that's right. Sometimes, yeah. you know, centres... Um, an image can be split into thirds, you know, or mm. it can be split down the middle and you see some big panoramas that are done that way by people that are... Mm, um, mm. accredited photographers and they really look quite, you know, mm. we've got that wow factor I suppose is what we're looking for. And, and, and oftentimes too I've noticed that um, with some of wildlife photography in particular a, um, a traditional style of uh, crop would be that a, a person or an animal would look into the vacant space of an image. Yes. Uh, and I noticed that some of the wildlife images in particular that really intrigue me is when the animal or the subject is looking out away from negative space into what is the corner of the image. Yeah. And it makes me feel like... Why, why is it looking, or what's yeah, important, mystery what's going yeah. on just out of frame that I can't see, yeah. you know, yeah, and, and that really gets me going. going. Yeah, yeah, it does, it does. Yeah, so it's a part of that story and it leaves that little bit of unanswered um, 
in, in the story for you too. Yeah. Mm. Well, even um, let's talk about one of the photographs, which is very popular, the decisive moment. Yes. So, yes. Um, so that's the the people jumping over the puddle. The the author there is Cardi or Bristol. Bristol. Thank you. Images, yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the the two uh, are actually elevated in, in the air and not yes, yet ready yes. to splash in that puddle. Right, yeah. And I think that tension in that moment of yes. uh, just not seeing, like you almost yeah. want to see with the, the next the frame yeah. to see the splash, yeah. Yeah. but it holds you, so yeah. a moment in time held there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it does. And that all comes back to your composition and how you convey and how you get that mood or emotion or feel, or, you know, yeah. that connection with the, with the viewer. What about physically mounting a print to go into a competition like the one that we had recently up at the Nambour Showgrounds. There, was, there yeah. was a lot of different methods of mounting there. Um, tell me, what, what's, what do you think overall is the best method? I think that the, the, the image needs to be mounted so it sits clean and square. Yeah. But you don't want the mount to sort of become the centrepiece. You want the picture to be there. So often just a black simple frame with a tiny white edge. Yeah. And then it doesn't sort of engulf, engulf your photo. It just kind of lets it be there. So just, around about a 50 mil or a yeah, two inch like edge yeah. around yeah. the image. And generally black people do use colours and sometimes you can get away with that depending on the composition or, or if it's something very colourful or very floral. Mm. But for the most part you don't want to sort of steal the show. You want the photo to come forward through that mount. Through the so mount. The darker colours you yeah. Really yeah. Help best with that. And I noticed with that particular competition, and um, I can only uh, assume that it might have been a younger person, but uh, they were offsetting the image into the mount, like off to the bottom corner yeah. or the right hand yeah. corner. Yeah. And I thought, well, I guess from a, a, some point of view, that's uh, making us recognise the images, made us stop and look at the images. But I don't know if it was an uh, overall uh, adding to the image by having this it, offset. I've, I often say that was creative images or that thing. Once you open, open the art box, yes, art is a very personal thing. Some yeah, people absolutely. like things, some people don't. So it can be dramatic and it can be in wow, and you think, well, I like that. And other people are quite, oh, no, that's really not my cup of tea. You know? yes, so yes. you go out on a limb if you want to do those sorts of things, and sometimes it can work, but sometimes it can get caught up. You know? Oh, great. So yeah, it depends on, again, it goes back to that specific category. If it's that kind of... Um, boisterous, bold, um, what do you call it, competition or that. Mm, that's, mm, that's, mm. The, that's what we're trying to portray then. You get away with it much more, you know? Yes, so true. something more conservative, yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm. So have you got anything exciting coming up, mate, as far as uh, photographic competitions on the Sunshine Coast that you're aware of? Or? Uh, we just had our show, our Nambour show, which yeah. was quite successful. Really a lot of uh, good art coming through, good uh, images there. Uh, which we judged at the time. I uh, hope you got down and had a look at that display. It was, it was well excellent. Look, yeah. And uh, we're going to evolve that next year into uh, to some short film uh, to complement the photography yeah. as well. Yeah. It should be great. I hope you can certainly get your uh, entry. Start getting them ready now yeah. Uh, yeah. for next year. Definitely. Little, uh, little uh, audio visuals and things and ideas. And, and, and it's the time of the year, so you often got the, the green tree to the autumn leaves on the tree to the leaves mm -hmm. blowing along the ground. So mm -hmm. for those sort of things, little sequences are handy. So keep that in mind, or if you're doing triptychs or those sorts of things. Yeah. Right. Things that follow on and relate and make a good story. They yeah. do make a good story. You're mm -hmm. right about that. Uh, I often tell the story, um, working at USC, I, I got the opportunity to go to um, some of the film and TV yep. uh, lectures. Yep. And one of the things that I changed my photography forever was the psychology of colour. Yes. And, and when we yes. watch a yeah. blockbuster movie, uh, the the, uh, the uh, director uses light and the psychology of colour very well. Yeah. In, in so much as into the fact of what colour gels they put onto a light of a character yeah. Yeah. helps the audience understand whether this is a trustworthy person or whether mm. this is the potential yeah. villain of the Moody's. story. Moody's, yeah. And it's all happening quite subliminally. We don't actually realise it. Exactly. But when it, that was pointed out to me that, you know, even, you know, the, a, a well thought out film, which has got up to 90 minutes, an hour and yep. a half, yeah, it's right. got dialogue, yes. it's got multiple frames, multiple scenes to help us yep. learn the yep. story and to, and to um, uh, connect with the character. As soon as I, that made sense to me that, oh, I see what, what uh, filmmaking is about, I thought, 
well, here I am, I'm a yeah. photographer, I've got one single frame to jam all of those components that's in. That's right, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. That, that yeah it's got to have all that impact built in, yeah. It is. We are storytellers, without mm. a doubt. But it's interesting you take that. When you look at sometimes in a movie, in the context of the things flying, you'll still have a few or three or four seconds on a minimalistic, maybe a boat with a person in it, and they just give you a little bit of a pause on that to think yeah, and, and infuse that Just to mood absorb or that feel, what yeah. you've just been given. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And there's I, no words, it's just that mood and feel yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, and the other thing that comes to mind for me too is um someone once told me that th this was a theatrical when when people went to live theater which still mm -hmm. happens today yep. they use this psychology of color and the stage lighting to bring the audience into the story yep. but they say that this is also where the old saying comes from oh I see you in a different light now. Yes, you know, right. I've changed my perspective yeah. or the way I think yeah. of you yeah. is very much the way yeah. that we would uh, either um, fall out of favour yeah. with a character yeah. on stage or, or that. It's, of... it's a bit like, um, uh, Rich, it's like the old, um, you can be listening but not actually hearing or mm. you can be seeing but not actually looking. looking. You know, so it's got to go in and be sort of processed. Yeah, the process. To take that message away. Great, yeah, great. Yeah. All right, Rich, this has been a really great conversation, mate. But before I let you go, mm -hmm. um, what I would like you to do, if we could just talk to the audience a little bit about the current photography yep. competition that we have going on now. So, folks, it's called Where Are We Now? And uh, we are the Garrick's Camera House store in Maroochydore. Now, many years ago, a decade ago, we were on the opposite side of the road here, and we have now evolved and come to where we are sitting at this current location. Mm -hmm. So when we put out the theme of where are we now, we wanted it to be something that could be interpreted in a lot of different ways. But um, Rich, I know you're not going to actually be judging the competition, no. so I feel safe to ask you yep. your own personal opinion. Yep. But if you were perhaps one of the audience members at home, what is the first thing that you would do as far as making sure that your photograph uh, fitted the theme? Well, we did the, the brief is that we're looking for um, sort of where we were to where we're travelling, so it's a timeline or a travelling thing, so you're looking at things that may have been in history, like memorials or buildings that were there that are no longer there. Uh, it can be modern infrastructure, like a lot of road construction. Mm -hmm. Or it can be like a little business that was in a place that's now not there, it's somewhere else, or it's changed into something else. Um, but a transitional kind of things that have changed, and it can even be like a tree with its leaves on, and then in autumn they disappear. You know? It's changed from one to the other. So evolution, perhaps? Yeah. Evolution yeah, yeah. falls under that category. Uh, nostalgia? Yes, nostalgia is good, would yeah. be another good word yeah, to help yeah. understand that scene. People... Yeah. people always good for an emotional content because people can relate to people body language faces eyes mm -hmm. so it's a good storyline mm -hmm. but it's still got to tie back into something transitioning i suppose or it's it going does. from you know a to b or yeah. being old to being new or something like that yeah yeah great yeah. okay so i hope that helps you uh, get a little bit better understanding of what a photographic judge actually looks for in those images and I guess too, Rich, one of the things with being a judge, you've got to sort of br just sort of uh, barrier yourself against, oh, that's just a pretty image. Yeah. Well, when, when you put something into a photographic competition, there's A, the theme. That's, yes. that's probably, yep. if, let's say out of a hypothetical 10 points, what is the theme out of 10 points represented for well, a that's, judge? That's the, the, it'll either be a story or a message or a mood that it'll... You know, when you look at it, you'll view it and think, oh, that makes me feel happy, sad, you know, I can yeah. relate to it. Oh, my grand done that, or, you know, I know a fellow with a car like that, those yes. sorts of feelings. Yes, And then the tools are used to enhance that as your composition with your leading lines or how you do it uh, with lighting, low light, you know, the gold now where you've got the yes. light coming across. Yes. Which is then what we replicate in studios and lighting, similar thing we're doing now. Correct. So your time of day is, is quite critical to where you go to, to, to the result you get thinking of light all the time, low light, high light, broad light. Um, so your composition, which sort of backs in with your lighting and your storytelling, I think they're the sort of the three... The three components. Three, yeah. Then your technical aspect kind of goes without saying it needs to be sharp where it needs to be, you know. It doesn't always have to be pin sharp. Some things are soft focus. Yeah. If that's what you're trying to depict, but it's yeah, best to have things, yeah. So would it be fair to say out of a hypothetical 10 points that the theme would be worth four? 
Yes, the definitely, yes. The technical uh, execution will be worth three. Yeah, something like that, yep, yep. And what, what would you say, the light with the creativity? The, yeah, just the, that, that, that license, that artistic license that you've... Taken to, yeah, to get to that it, image. Yeah, put your view on it or yours, yeah. Mm. All right, mm. that's great. All right, folks, well, don't forget you've got about another week left with the Where Are We Now photography competition. If you haven't got your entries in, make sure you go to the uh, Facebook page, jump onto the actual um, the advertisement that's there, and all of the details about how to enter uh, will be on that page. Excellent. Thanks for coming in, Rich. I really appreciate your time, mate. Thank you. Thanks, folks. Catch you later. Bye.